This Christmas in the Holy Land, the oldest church in Iraq, one of the oldest in the world, did not celebrate Mass in the ancient city of Mosul for the first time in 2,000 years. The image of the baby Jesus in a manger in swaddling clothes, once housed in that magnificent church touched by history, is now instead in a makeshift tent in a refugee camp. Think about it. There are virtually no Jews in many Middle Eastern countries. They were slaughtered and forced to flee. And as the world watches with a distant interest, the same is now happening to Christians of all sects. As men and women are butchered, children tortured, their severed heads displayed with pride by jihadists, the leader of the Catholic Church, Pope Francis, puts the enormous weight of his papacy behind the plight of Central American children already in the United States. And he works to normalize U.S.-Cuban relations and does nothing more than call for constructive dialogue with Muslims over the Christian genocide. Since when does the Catholic Church look to mediate the abuser with the victim? The victim has nothing to mediate. We know that Christian women are praying for the West to bomb the camp where they are sex slaves to the so-called religious Muslims. But they have nothing to dialogue. Tonight we will examine whether Islam requires this jihad. Why and why now? and why there is little action to protect Christians around the world. The belief that we in the United States are immune from this violence or protected from jihadists is simply naive. And I don't care whether the FBI or the White House wants to call the shooting by Nidal Hassan or the severing of a woman's head in Oklahoma after she complained about her killer trying to convert employees to Islam workplace violence. This is jihad. The lone wolves are here in the United States. America was founded by people who gave up everything, their families, their fortune, and their livelihood to ensure through the First Amendment that we would have religious freedom, that, quote, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech. So why does it feel like we're moving in the direction of our First Amendment rights being subjugated to the religions of others? When our president says an American should be prosecuted for exercising his First Amendment by making a video perceived as negative about Islam, when the former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton says we need to understand and empathize with our enemies, we are on a downward spiral. Our First Amendment free speech and freedom of religion are taking a back seat to an insane and brutal political correctness. This is a nation that was founded on Judeo-Christian ethics and freedom of religion. Muslim law requires that Christians and Jews are second-class citizens. There have even been attempts in some states to pass laws requiring the imposition of Sharia law. And in response to this, Act for America has fought to stop the Sharia attempt by requiring American laws for American courts. The imposition of Sharia law in this country would be a death knell to our democracy. So why do we stand by and watch the genocide of Christians in the Middle East? It's history repeating itself. But remember, it is to our detriment this time. Six million Jews were killed in the Holocaust while the world looked the other way. Martin Niemöller, a pastor who was in a Nazi concentration camp and an outspoken foe of Adolf Hitler, put it best. First they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. And then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. And then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. Let's hope that we speak out soon so others will speak out for us.